Hey community, how are you? This is Elemental Mirror Podcast. I hope you are having the best week. So just a little disclaimer before we get into this, my daughter is in the room. We are filming during the day, hence the different location, and she is playing with her toys. So if you can hear noises in the background, that is what that is. But I have not had time to film any other day this week because she has got a cold and she has not been sleeping. She has been highly clingy. And this is the first moment this week where I'm being able to sit here and film this. So I just thought, you know what, we're not going to be perfect with it. Let's just wing it and see what happens but if I have to dip out and deal with her I will cut that out of this episode so that you don't get your time wasted but anyway so let's delve into this episode because I feel the call to elaborate further on last week's episode and just go into the like not the calling but how to move forward from that like once you know what your calling is once you understand what you want what the hell do you do? And I tend to journal most days. And through my journaling, the thing that came to me was the fact that our self-esteem is ultimately the foundation for everything. You know, it's the foundation for every decision you will ever make in your life, every relationship choice, every interaction, every job opportunity that you accept or decline, just everything in life will be affected by our self-esteem. So I feel the call to like pull some oracle cards on this and to just delve into my own experiences and stuff in relation to our self-esteem because I've really come to understand this in my own life and looking back at my own choices that I have made. You know, like having low self-esteem will literally make you choose the dumbest choices (laughs) ever like you will choose the toxic thing even though you know it's toxic toxic uh, toxic. and even though you know that it could potentially go in the most horrific ways like it could unfold in the worst ways possible and yet you still choose it or you could have the most negative experiences happen to you and still go back to that same thing you know and I've really come to understand that that stems from low self-worth how we feel about ourselves is the key to everything in our lives and Like in order to change this, first of all, you need to become aware of how you feel about yourself. So this can require observing your your thoughts and really starting to understand what they're saying on a daily basis. And I highly recommend journaling for that because sometimes when I read back through my journal, I'm like, what? a fuck like I'm so negative you're so mean to yourself you're just really belittling and punishing for no reason and you keep shaming yourself and stuff like you really need to be aware of what that story is and then you can work towards changing it you know and obviously this can sound quite abstract and it can sound quite unrealistic of like yeah but how the hell do you go about doing that you know like it can sound so wishy-washy and vague and like Like it's not possible, you know, like it's just something so extreme and unrealistic that you can't actually achieve. And what I would say to that is like changing your beliefs is a daily practice. So it's going to feel like you're not making any progress. It's a bit like working out when you first start doing it, you don't notice any change. So when you're commit into this daily practice you're not going to notice a difference straight away and you're going to want to give up it's going to feel like you're not doing anything it's going to feel like it's not making a difference and you're still stuck in the same situations and you're still living the same life (laughs) yes baby let's let's tell them do you agree with mama do you agree with me it's going to feel like you're still living the same life that you were living a week ago and that nothing's changed and you're still feeling low and all of this but this is where discipline and consistency comes in because you have to keep going and you have to just keep trying and allow yourself to fail allow yourself to fall off allow yourself to be 
imperfect with it because it's a daily lifelong commitment and practice with yourself to observe your thoughts to understand what they're saying what kind of vibration you're at you know what home frequency you're running off of where your beliefs lie and then being able to adjust them being able to correct that thought being able to stop it in its tracks and notice where the lie is where it's telling you lies you know And this is, again, through a daily practice because it's not something that you're just going to be able to do once and then all of a sudden you love yourself and it's like you're all happy and, you know, content with life. Like, no, it's going to be a consistent daily practice and there's going to be moments where you don't notice the negative self-talk, you know, and then in another moment you will notice it and you just have to keep trying. You have to allow yourself to fall off of it and be able to get yourself back up and try again, you know, and that's where the work comes in. Like this is work and it can be difficult and it can be frustrating and a lot of emotion will come up with this and that is okay. Like that is the work. Having that emotion come up is the work. Having that thought come up and being able to clock it and check check it and be like, no, 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 no. We're not going to spiral down this anymore. Like I hear you telling me that I ain't shit. I hear you shaming me for this behavior or shaming me because I want to go after my dreams I hear you telling me that I'm not good enough to go after it and yeah I do believe that actually and yeah my emotions feel that and I feel low in that and I'm gonna allow myself to be here right now and then I'm gonna look for the lies and I'm gonna start to pay attention to it and be like wait a minute you're telling me that I'm not good enough to go after my dreams why am I not good enough why am I not worthy of this thing? And keep questioning it, you know, like keep questioning and analysing like, okay, you're telling me I'm not good enough. And I feel, I feel that I believe that I know I'm not good enough. But why am I not good enough? And then go to the next thing of like, okay, I'm not good enough, because I don't like, okay, let's take an example of this. Let me think. So with my music, this is a belief I've had for the longest flipping time is that I'm not good enough to make music or make these videos and put myself out there publicly okay so we'll just use this as an example I'm not good enough to make music okay why am I not good enough because I don't feel worthy of it I don't feel like my skill set is good enough I don't feel like people will be receptive to it I don't feel like they'll like my songs okay why won't they like your songs because I don't feel like my skills are good enough and I don't feel like my songs are good enough okay why are they not good enough who are they not good enough for well they're not good enough for the the audience I'm trying to reach they're not good enough for strangers on the internet okay why are they not good enough for strangers on the internet why do you believe that strangers won't like it Well, because if I compare myself to other artists that are online, I don't feel like I match their level. Okay, why don't you match their level? Well, because I don't have their budget. I don't have their team. I don't have their marketing. Okay, what could happen if you were to put yourself out there without this budget? Like you literally just keep on going and going and going and delving deeper and deeper. And I feel like eventually you'll reach the point where you realise that you're trying to get yourself to not be you. Like you're basically telling yourself that who you are on a core level is not okay, that you can't be who you are and that you have to change yourself in order to be somebody else like you literally have to become Beyonce or you have to become like whoever it is that you idolize whoever it is that you view as like the perfect person that you would strive to be like you're telling yourself that you have to be them in order to be worthy and then at the end of that is like well you can't be them you actually can't because you're not them. That's not who you've incarnated in this life to be. And when you really look at them, if you were to get to know them on a personal one-to-one level, because most of the time the people that we idolise are people we don't even know. And if you were to get to know them on a personal level, you would probably find that they're not actually as perfect as what you perceive them to be, that they have a lot of flaws and a lot of characteristics that you wouldn't necessarily want yourself, you know? So we break that illusion of them being this incredible 
perfect, flawless person and realize that actually they're not that. And then at the same time, realize that you can't even be them because they're not that, first of all. They can't be that. They can't live up to that because that's not who they really are. That's an illusion that you've held over them. And then at the same time, you can't be them because that's not who you've incarnated to be. And all of the perfect things that you want to achieve in yourself, like that level of perfection that you want to reach, is not possible. And then through that, we have to come to a level of acceptance. And I feel like this is where the issue lies for the majority of people is in accepting who they are. It's not necessarily that you have to change yourself. It's not the striving for greatness or trying to change your habits or trying to change your thoughts. It's in the acceptance of this is who I am. This is where I'm at. This is what my thoughts are saying. This is the beliefs that I have. Like it's in the accepting of being not perfect. That's where the change lies. It's our resistance to it. It's our hating it. It's our shaming it. It's our punishing it. That's what causes the issues, you know. It's because we're not willing to accept our flaws. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my child, but she is super bubbling to herself today. Yeah, so it's in us constantly resisting who we are, resisting where we're at, telling ourselves that we should be this and we should be that, we should be doing this, we should be doing that, shaming ourselves because our thoughts are unkind. Like, if you could actually accept that your thoughts are negative right now that would relieve so much anxiety and so much pressure and so much resistance that then you could start to implement change then from that point you could then start to change that thought and start thinking something else like consciously start to choose something else by saying affirmations by saying all of these other things you know like then you could start shifting it But oftentimes we want to jump to the change without accepting where we're at in the first place. Oh, my child is trying to grab some wires right now. I need to quickly go move her. I really feel like it's through our resistance. And this is just me going through my own experiences and what I have come to understand for myself is just honestly our resistance to everything that we are to the present moment, to where we're at, that is really what causes us the most suffering and what prevents us from being able to make the changes that we want, you know, whether it's changing your beliefs, whether it's changing your habits or changing a relationship or whatever it is, like, oftentimes we're just not accepting of where we're at, like, the level of shame that you feel around where you're at or like say your circumstances you want to change them or you want to change your job or whatever it is your lack of acceptance means that you then start saying that you're not good enough like it means that through you no longer okay let me think about how to word this like through you deciding that where you're at is not okay you're basically telling yourself that where you're at is not good enough and then we kind of take that on as meaning that we're not good enough you know like you're not willing to accept who you are and the circumstances that you're in and through that we start to internalize that as meaning that we're not worthy like you give that meaning of it being that you a a you problem like a your worth gets tied to your situations and experiences does that make sense like I find sometimes it hard to put things into words but it really comes down to how we feel about ourselves and the way that we perceive ourselves and it's often our resistance to where we're at and our resistance to our flaws that causes so much more suffering than if you were to just embrace it like when you start to embrace who you are and this is I feel like where I'm starting to get with myself but I still struggle with self-esteem don't get me wrong but like when you start to accept your flaws and accept where you're at and accept the circumstances that you're in and accept the chapter that you're in it 
relieves so much pressure that you can then from that point start to work on your beliefs and start to like work on any triggering moments that happen throughout your lives like when a situation comes up or when you find yourself comparing yourself to other people then you start to notice the lies a lot more easily and quicker because you're more accepting of where you're at and instead of like feeling so much resistance towards the comparison you start to accept the fact that oh shit I actually am comparing myself right now like it's not just about accepting where you're at it's also about accepting that this is the thoughts I'm having right now like this is the comparison I'm experiencing right now these are the emotions I'm feeling right now you know like we resist everything (laughs) to be honest because it's uncomfortable who wants to feel those emotions who wants to be present in that who wants to accept that this is a flaw that I have you know like it's really uncomfortable I even experienced this with these videos because when I watch them back I'm like cringing sometimes at different characteristics and like things that I do and words that I say and stuff I'm like oh and I want to change it but I have to just accept it otherwise I'll never upload the video do you know what I mean so you really have to come to a level of acceptance with yourself and that is obviously going to be uncomfortable if you have spent years shaming yourself and punishing yourself and belittling yourself it's gonna take some time to get comfortable not only in your thoughts and in your mind but in your body too and like it's I really feel like it's about being comfortable with your thoughts and allowing them to be there because a lot of the time we don't want them to be there and we want to push them away we get angry at ourselves for thinking them and we feel like there's something wrong with us so there's the mental level there's the emotional level where we don't want to feel our emotions we shame ourselves for anger coming up or for sadness coming up or whatever emotion it is we shame that And then we also don't want to be in our body because that's where our thoughts and emotions exist. And we're like, get me the fuck out of here, you know? And we start to disassociate or we distract ourselves with physical things like drugs and alcohol and stuff because we don't want to be in our body. We don't want to be in this life because our thoughts and our emotions are making us feel, are you okay, baby? (laughs) Our thoughts and emotions start to make us feel unworthy. So we don't want to be here in it, you know? So it's like a whole existence just becomes really uncomfortable because of our thoughts and our emotions, but not only them, but our resistance to them. So yeah, I feel like I just rambled and ranted for a lot of that. So I'm going to pull a oracle card right now and see if we can delve into this a bit further. Um, But yeah, I'm sure at some point I will... Oh, two cards flew out at me. I'm sure at some point I will do a full like step by step but it's not really something that I've delved into myself yet. I've not really broken it down for myself. That's something I should do in my journal because maybe I'll do like a course or a book or something, I don't know, with the step-by-steps of it, but yeah. Okay, so these cards, pillar of light, your vibration is rising, you are the oracle. So that came out with the initiation, rite of passage, crossing the threshold. So the initiation... This is literally an initiation. Like, I feel like this work, this shadow work, is the initiation. It's what takes you from the old reality into the new. It's what takes you from feeling so shit about yourself to entering a whole new paradigm where you love yourself. And how you get yourself from there to the future one that you really want is through doing the work. It is through shadow work. It is through self-awareness. And it is through accepting where you're at. You know, it is through embracing where you're at, embracing your current reality, embracing how you currently feel about yourself, embracing the emotions as they come up, being able to sit with everything that comes up, everything that rises in you, being able to sit with it, be present with it and allow it to exist because it's through us punishing it, shaming it, belittling it, hating it. It's through us neglecting it and being completely angry at it and resisting it and running away from it and shaming it and pushing it away and pushing it in the corner and distracting ourselves with other things it's through that that we feel more suffering than we would if we were to embrace it and don't get me wrong embracing it also can feel very uncomfortable so doing this work is not necessarily all fun and games you know like 
it's hard work but the alternative is how you've been living currently which is still suffering you know what I mean so it's like which one do you want to choose do you want to continue suffering in the way that you have been or do you want to try and do the work and maybe still experience some more suffering but also find the light at the end of that tunnel you know like the only way out is in the only way through it is to actually go within and do the work and I know that that is not the easiest path and a lot of people aren't here to do that and that is okay but if you feel called towards it like honestly it is a game changer when you get out the other side and don't get me wrong there's always going to be things that you can learn about yourself always going to be things that you can change and evolve and explore you know because that is the purpose of life that is what we're here for and that is the beauty of it and eventually you'll actually find the fun in it you know, but at the start, when you're feeling so low and you're full of resistance and you're full of anxiety and so deeply unhappy and maybe have experienced a lot of trauma, like at the start, of course, it's going to be scary and it's going to be hard and it's going to be uncomfortable. And like, you may not see the light at the end of the tunnel. You may not see that this is going to actually work. But honestly, I promise you, when you start to delve into it, it will change your life and it is an initiation and there are so many people that choose to avoid that you know and that is okay because that is their path but just know like from experience that whilst the initiation is uncomfortable and whilst the initiation is something that you may want to run away from when you embrace it and you embrace where you're at you will seriously change your life. And this is the other card, pillar of light. Your vibration is rising. Like this is how you transform your life. This is how you get your vibration and your home frequency to change is honestly by embracing where you're at, by looking at where you're at, by allowing your emotions to exist, by allowing your thoughts to exist, by embracing them without resistance and obviously that takes practice it takes daily practice to observe and bring yourself back to the present moment like your thoughts start wandering they start going crazy they start being negative and all of this and the moment that you clock it and it will take practice to notice it but when you start to pay attention and you notice it bringing yourself back into the present moment And maybe even doing some deep breathing and just really being aware of like, okay, my thoughts are running wild right now. I'm being so mean to myself. I don't know how to change this. I fucking hate myself. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. And allowing that to just exist, you know, like you're not trying to change it. We're not trying to change anything right now. You're simply allowing yourself to be in that self-hate, to be in that anger, to be in that frustration. And exist you know like you're just allowing yourself to be there and to be with it and to allow this emotion to rise and and exist and the bottom of the deck is play have fun celebrate don't be so serious I feel like that part is kind of hard to get to when you're at the beginning because to be able to experience the joy of doing this work comes with time it comes with patience like I'm only now and I'm when did I so 2017 is when I had like the abusive relationship that I was in and when the catalytic moment for me happened and then 2018 is when I started this work and we're now in 2024 so it has taken this many years for me to get to a point where I'm actually starting to experience joy and I'm actually starting to like my life and to like doing this work you know like it's taken years to get to here Azaria please (laughs) will you yeah you turn around and look at me no so it has taken me this long how many years is that like six years or something maybe even seven it's taken that long for me to of and I mean it's taken that many years of me doing this work to finally get to the joy you know and it's going to be different for everyone so I don't want that to put you off but the point is that regardless of how long it takes you eventually get there because there's been so many breakthroughs for me throughout that time where I'm like oh I get it now like I get what I'm doing that's causing my suffering I get why I 
made that decision or you know what I mean like it's taken that long of really coming to understand myself and learning to build a relationship with myself to finally start to enjoy my life but there's been a lot of physical changes externally in my reality throughout that time like so much has changed every year throughout that But it's only now where I'm really starting to experience the joy. So I just want that to be like an encouraging message for you that when you continue doing this work, you will experience the change and it may take time and that is okay. But what you're doing is allowing yourself to exist. You're allowing yourself to be who you are and throughout that journey, oh my God, it's going to be such a huge game changer once you start But the key is in the starting. The key is in to persevere with it, to keep going and to allow yourself to be flawed, to allow yourself to be imperfect with it, to allow yourself to fail, to allow those thoughts to spiral and for you to fall down that rabbit hole. And eventually, maybe even a week later, you notice it and you're like, oh shit, I fell off. Let me put myself back on, you know, like to allow yourself to not be perfect with it is actually okay and that's where you start that's where this work comes into play (laughs) so we've pulled the pillar of light again we've also pulled another card that was further down the bottom of the deck that I didn't read out so it's funny that it's come out again which is the great gathering (laughs) you want to join in this podcast The Great Gathering is all coming together, intuitive hits, soul tribe. So this to me is like us communicating right now, like having the the communication, having other people around you that are doing this work is so powerful. And then the other card is Imrama, I think that's how you say it. Where are you being called to journey to? So you've got your vibration is rising. Where are you being called to journey to? And it's all coming together, soul tribe, intuitive hits. Honestly, I feel like this is just confirmation, but also where are you being called to journey to? Like, are you willing to take this path? Are you willing to make a change in your life? Like, are you willing to do the work to transform it? Or do you want to continue in the cycles and the spaces that you've been in, you know? Like, it ultimately comes down to your own choices and what you want because nobody can do this work for you. Nobody can force you. Nobody can like, you know, I can sit here talking about this all day, but obviously it comes down to us as an individual of what we want and what we're going to choose for ourselves. And like, you have so much potential. That's what I'm just feeling like is that everybody in existence has so much potential, so much that they could be doing, so much that they want, so many hopes and dreams, you know, so much aspiration and just like everything that you could ever possibly imagine for yourself and want is possible for you, but you have to do the work and that's just it like we all individually have to do the work to be able to get ourselves there so it comes down to whether you're going to do the work whether you want to do it she's being super clingy so I think I'm going to leave this video there because I don't want to leave her getting all upset but the bottom of the deck just so you know is birthing a new age birthing new creations dreaming a new world into being like this is where it starts it starts with how you feel about yourself it starts with you it starts with you embracing where you're at and allowing yourself to exist with your flaws and with your current circumstances and from there is how you start to make a change so yeah I hope that this episode was helpful and we will elaborate and delve further into things in the next episode as well as where you can go from that point But yeah, I feel like this is just going to turn into a story, this podcast, (laughs) where we're going to keep going further and further with it. But yeah, I really, really appreciate you. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one. Have the best week.